Good afternoon. My name is Kelly Lam. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Miele. Welcome, bienvenue, and willkommen. We're here, to you, we're here with you this afternoon, as many of you remain safe at home with your families, um, to bring to you another session of Miele Live. These sessions are intended for you to answer questions that you may have about products that you have in your home, products that you're interested in purchasing from us, and many of you have questions about the services that we're currently offering during these unique times we all face. Meal Alive, we're going to cover a vast variety of topics. Earlier today, we covered a session on our most popular dishwasher, the Miele G4228 dishwasher. We later then covered off the importance of cooking ventilation. In future sessions, we're going to cover off floor care, how to best take care of your clothes with Miele laundry, and also the vast products we offer in the area of cooking. Pour ceux d'entre vous qui ont demandé pour des sessions en français, on travaille actuellement d'avoir des sessions dans les semaines qui viennent. Meal Alive is fully interactive. It really gives you the opportunity to interact with us in real time. Many of you have already submitted questions through the comment section if you've logged in through YouTube, or if you're actually watching us on mealalive.ca, in the bottom section, you can leave a comment for us. We're going to monitor these questions and try to answer as many as possible in real time with you. Again, it's fully interactive, and one of the sessions that you've asked of us to actually host is in regards to cooking, and one of the many features that Mila offers, but very specifically is around a unique feature in the Mila oven with our roast probe. I've got our product expert here today, Marilyn. Good afternoon, Marilyn. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, Marilyn, one of the really unique features that Mila ovens offer is in regards to our roast probes. And, so, and we've got a lot of questions from viewers requesting um, how to actually best handle, how to utilize it. So I think that's what you're going to cover off for us today. Yes, that's right, exactly. So do you maybe want to start by just covering which ovens offer the roast probe? All right, so hello everyone. Um, the DGC Steam Combi unit has the wired probe. That I'm going to show you how that's inserted as well. Our Sensitronic 30-inch wall oven also has the wired probe. And then our M-Touch 30-inch wall um, oven has the wireless probe. So when you look at the series of the three uh, lineups that we have for our ovens, our Easy Control um, does not come with a probe. Then you just start from there. Then the Sensitronic with wired and M-Touch with um, the wireless. So maybe stepping back a little bit as well, Marilyn, is maybe explain what's the purpose of a probe, really? Great question. And a lot of people really don't utilize it enough because um, they feel that, you know, it's, I'm going to be fine, but when you are purchasing expensive cut of meat or you want to, uh, especially following, you know, the guidelines, the codes about food safety and um, how a chicken should be done. So normally when you're roasting a chicken, it should register at 175. And today, since we are going to be showing chicken, the whole chicken, a pork uh, roast and also a beef roast, I'm going to show you that how that is all set up. So chicken is at 175, a roast probe, um, roast probe. The pork will be at approximately 145 degrees Celsius. And for beef, it's um, for medium rare, it's approximately 135 degrees. So what Mila has done actually is we've already built this into the oven and we know the 30 inch ovens will show you on the display what um, the reading is at. Our Steam Combi, it doesn't show that, but when you are selecting it and putting it in, it will actually cook to the doneness of what pork should be. So really the probe is taking the place of what people would normally have in their kitchen, a meat thermometer or yes. a, a food thermometer. Exactly. And it really reads the internal temperature of the meat. Right. I think one thing you'll show is how we've integrated that um, into actually the function of our ovens to make it even easier right. for our customers exactly and you know and to just be comfortable using it you know and um, 
because a lot of times some of the probes they just end up in our top drawer in the kitchen and um, nobody uses it really to the full extent so I'm going to show you what programs actually um, where we use the probes and so that you'll know for future reference if you want to try it yourselves as well. So maybe let's get started with the, the chicken here mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of times we get questions from customers about actually how to insert uh, the probe and where in the different types of meats right. that, that we have. Okay, I'm just going to be using gloves obviously because I'm going to be touching different um, types of meats as well and just for more sanitary reasons here. So, um, as you can see, this is my whole chicken that I have. I'm actually just going to sprinkle some salt and then I'll rub this in to the chicken. And really, I think uh, as many of you are at home cooking as well with your families, um, I think roast chicken is kind of gives that comfort feel um, to have a roast chicken dinner at home. And it's one of the easiest recipes uh, to do. And I think the, it's always interesting to note is when the chicken's done, right. I think is the biggest question. And, and when we roast our chicken here in our classes, um, Marilyn, we don't use oil at all. No, we, we actually don't. let the natural fat from the uh, chicken itself actually roast in, in that. So we actually don't add any oil into mm -hmm. our recipes. Here. I know, because I'm thinking at home, somebody's probably wondering why doesn't she add some oil on here or because that's the norm of what we've done. But we've just found that um, with the natural juices that come out, mm -hmm. it actually browns the chicken really nicely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually, just excuse me for one second. Just wipe my hands a little bit. So with a chicken, you want to insert the probe into the thickest part of the breast itself. So, um, and a lot of people would sometimes find that maybe the thigh is the thickest, but the breast is the best part to put it in. And because I'm going to put this into, sorry, I keep doing this, into my oven here, um, I know that the probe insert is to the left of the oven. So as I'm gonna slide this into the oven, once I turn around, it will be for the left. So I'm actually just going to, if um, um, Gayor over there could just kind of focus in as to where I'm going to put this in. And remember, we don't want to touch any bone. And if you touch bone, like I can feel it right here, I'm going to pull it out immediately. And there, I went right through without touching a bone. So, and that's the thickest part that's of the, the, thickest of, part of the of, breast. Right. So um, Kelly, if you wouldn't mind, just open this oven for me this right one here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse my back. I'm just gonna. So Marilyn, now you're opening. So inside the oven, there's a uh, an outlet, basically where the roast probe gets inserted into. Right. Right. So let's just actually program this right now. It's gonna, I'm going to open the oven a few times just so you know the position. So when you're using a probe, what I should probably do, I'm going to just pull this out for a second. I'm going to select MasterChef, and then I have the selection of poultry, meat, fish, <coughs> pizza, whatever I'm selecting. So I'm going to do poultry. And what is it? Is it a turkey, a duck, quail, chicken? So it is chicken. And it's going to ask me, is it a whole chicken, cutlets, or pieces? I'm actually doing a whole chicken. Then it's going to um, set the temperature and you see it pops up at 360. But if you just wait a minute, it's actually going to drop it at 175, which is that's the internal, uh, the core temperature that we want for chicken. So I'm going to press OK. It says place food in the oven and use the rose probe. So it's guiding you along the way. So I've placed it in the oven. I've used the um, I've inserted the probe. It's actually telling me to put the rack on shelf level three. So from the bottom, one, two, three is where I'm actually putting the chicken in. And I'm pressing OK. And when I close this, it's telling me that this will finish at approximately 6.09 uh, p.m. So that's the whole cooking temperature. So I'm saying OK. 
And I'm also now, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, increase the temperature and bring it to a searing stage. So it's going to sear the chicken on the outside. This is where it's going to get that nice golden color. And then once it sears it, it will drop it to the temperature that has been selected for the chicken to cook. And so again, you've used the MasterChef function yes. uh, in this particular case. Right. Um, I think w another function that we obviously have in the ovens is the auto roast yes. function. And I think a lot of customers have asked us the question, uh, can the roast probe be used with uh, the auto roast function? Great question. Um, and that is one that always comes up. You're correct on that. So on auto roast, you do not use the roast probe. Um, it's going to be just you're putting the chicken in. You're used to, um, you know, selecting um, the temperature of what you would like to do, and you're just inserting it in, and then taking it out when you, whatever timing that you've selected for it. Um, Marilyn, we've already got a question, so I'm going to try to do these as they come along here. Sure. Um, so a question from Donna. Uh, welcome, Donna, to Mila Live. Thanks for watching us. Um, is it okay for the cable on the probe to touch the oven racks or roasting tray? Yeah, it's fine for the cable because um, it has a coating that's on there, so there's no problem. Um, the main thing that we're doing right now is that we've plugged it in. It's not kinked in any way to go in there, and then it's just um, being inserted directly into the meat itself, so it be the chicken. So it's just that if you were to put it onto a tray and you find that between the racks maybe that um, the cord is twisted or kinked, you should really take that out and just let it rest nicely on top of the tray. But touching the tray is no it's problem. It's no problem at all. No. At all. Great. Um, so Marilyn, maybe we can go to the next cut of meat uh, yes. we have here, which is a really nice uh, pork uh, pork roast. Yeah. Um, which oven are we going to use? And also then in this case, uh, how are we going to insert the roast probe into the pork pork okay. one? So this, uh, we're going to be using our, the DGC, the Combi Steam. And as you notice, like this is not a thick piece of uh, pork. And that's why I've done the selection. I wanted to show various um, heights and how the actual probe goes in. And again, I'm going to choose in here when I finish dressing the pork roast, um, where I'm going to insert the probe into it. So why don't I first, I'm just going to put this on the side put this on the side and again I'm just going to actually this time I would like to brush a little bit of oil yeah and pork is t tends to obviously be much leaner than yes. uh, a lean type of meat and so obviously we're, we're adding some oil to, to yes, this one exactly and because the cut on the edge you can see like there's not a lot of fat that's yeah. really there so I do want to and I think like all all meats Marilyn that we roast um, you know I think everybody has to also remember that it will continue to cook during the resting process of of the meat coming out of the oven as well exactly um, one point I just want to also mention here is that when you are adding salt onto the meat don't add the salt closer to the meat because you're just going to be clumping it in that area. So really you want to be high and you want it to fall onto the meat itself, just like what I'm doing now. Just going to add pepper. Depending how much pepper you like. I love pepper, so sometimes I have to hold back. Now, on this, what I'm going to do is when I'm looking at this um, roast here, I'm looking at it and I can kind of see it goes up, increases up here. So I am going to insert it this way into the, uh, from I guess my left side going in. And there, again, um, and this is boneless. So I didn't have to worry about the bone on here. Right. Um, and so what I'm going to do with this, thank you, Kelly. So let's just see how I'm going to enter this in. So let me just leave this out for a second. So on the DGC, the steam combi, I'm actually going to press MasterChef. I'm going to select meat. Oops, 
meat, and it is pork. Um, I'm going to say a pork lo loin on here because more so than a beef pork tenderloin because it wants to be bigger. So, and I'm going to roast, and it's going to ask me to insert the grease filter. So. A lot of questions have also come up about the grease, grease filter. filter yeah. When do we use it? When don't we use it? So anything that has natural oils in there will splatter inside the oven. So you don't want that to be splattering in the back with the fan areas. So simply the way that it's actually curved on the top, that's your little handle. I'm going to reach in and we're just going to put it in. Very simple. I'm going to say OK. And again, the great thing is the oven really prompts you to do that if you forget about right. it. Right. And then it's asking me to place the universal tray on shelf level one. So I can do this a little bit differently here. So just give me one second. So I'm at shelf level one. I'm going to press OK. Oh. And the great thing is actually, for the, not sure the camera will pick it up, but the shelves are actually numbered, so there's yes. actually a numbering on the side yes. to tell you which is shelf one. Exactly. And then the rack actually, it's saying place the rack on shelf level two. So this is why, you know, obviously when you're using the oven and you're making a roast at home, you'll automatically know that this is going to go on to shelf level two. And I'm going to say OK. And I want it to start now. And it kind of did that because it's telling me now to use the roast probe. So I'm going to go in on the left side once again. Not sure if you can see that. And back to, oh, I'm sorry. This is actually good that this does this. Um, back to Donna's question about where if it should be sitting on. So I've just let it sit onto the rack. And I'm just going to, sorry. Should I check that earlier? So this is how intuitive these ovens are, Kelly, as you notice they're cooking. Um, if you don't have enough water, for, especially for the unplugged version. It prompts you to do that. Exactly. And, and looking at the way that the oven is set up to roast, I think the other great thing is, um, you know, I, I know when we love to do this, the way it's set up on rack two is you can put root vegetables underneath yes. to actually roast while the actual pork roast and it would actually pick up the juices in potatoes of course underneath exactly uh, which is a great thing yes and i think the last time one of our viewers was <clears throat> asking if we were to um make a roast could we put potatoes underneath that this would yeah. be great to put uh, any vegetables that they have underneath this so we're just going to close the door the program is running um, and at some point it's going to actually give me a timing as to when this is done because it has to do the preheating stage. But unlike the other ovens where it actually gave me a number, this in the um, pork loin, it just is automatically um, installed in here so it knows what pork should cook at, at that temperature and it doesn't want you to change it just for safety sakes. Okay. Yep. So that's this Which one. actually maybe lends us, Marilyn, there were a couple of questions that came in from uh, Lily and Donna, which I guess had somewhat similar questions in regards to temperature. Um, so uh, Lily asked the question, how do I find details as to the temperature mode and time duration for specific MasterChef programs so I can extrapolate to use with other recipes? Well, what I have done, um, because this is all set up in our ovens where when you are selecting um, a program, it automatically comes up. But if you're questioning and you're just not too sure, um, I'm going to say Google's your great friend there because I go in and I check internal core temperatures for meats um, and poultry, duck, lamb. And then I have a sh um, kind of like a sheet that I know, okay, this is correct and that has been, um, it is for the right temperature. So if you did need to change something, you would know that you have, um, let's just say, uh, either 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 165 degrees. It won't sway too much because it wants to keep that that um, the healthy guideline for the code for you to eat um, chicken uh, where it's cooked and it's not raw, and then to how much you want it cooked. So that's how usually I I kind of look into that as well. And and Lily, I think if you're asking specifically about our Master Chef programs and wanting a yeah. little more details, if you 
Uh, that's something that we can look into more details at and actually get back to you mm -hmm. uh, to outline. Because I think you were asking really about the, our parameters specifically um, and, and how we've created the programs and timing within right. the programs. And that goes to our R&D chef basically because she, when she's programming something in the oven, she looks at guidelines and codes as well to program those. Yeah, so, th so that's something that we can actually provide you the details on if there are very specific things. Uh, we actually have a research and development chef here uh, in our offices that actually specifically works on developing master chef programs for, for Canada as well as the U.S. So uh, if there are very specific programs you want the details of, we're more than happy to provide you those answers. I think, Donna, you had a very similar question. I have a similar question to Lily's. When using the Rose Probe in my combi steam oven, I don't get an estimated finish time. Right. Is this normal? Yes, it is, because um, built into the program, it actually, uh, it actually kind of knows when it is going to be um, stopping, because with the sensor that's installed in it, it's picking up that if my pork uh, roast right now is supposed to be hitting 145, the back sensors in the oven itself will pick that up, and once it reaches that temperature, then it will um, beep a prompt you, and then it'll shut off. Yeah, so we spend a lot of time on research and development with our chefs, not only here, but we share resources across uh, all the different Mila uh, countries in the world, and we try to develop the best programs possible. But again, uh, for Lily and Donna, if there really are specific programs where you want to know kind of the behind the scenes, um, you know, send that to us, either leave that in the comment section and we for sure will be able to uh, provide those details uh, more than happy to. Mm -hmm. um, continuing on the questions, Marilyn, um, Craig McDermott has a question. Can you put the probe in at any temperature? So can you set, I assume, Craig, what you're asking us is, can you adjust the internal temperature um, of the probe uh, manually? So you prefer something more well done than others. Can you adjust that temperature, Marilyn? Yes, um, great question again. Yes, you can. So basically, as I had kind mm. of just mentioned, touched on lightly, is that you can adjust the temperature, but always know what your guideline is and um, where to set this at, because you don't want it to be really under, unless you're making a, a beef. beef, because beef, you can mm. have it blue and you can have it rare, uh, medium rare, and then well done. So you can make that selection so it's a little bit different. But when it's uh, with pork, there's certain, um, it can go usually about 120 to 145, um, the comfort level of eating. But chicken should, uh, normally is about uh, 165 to 175. Marilyn, is it possible when we set up this next one maybe to show uh, the adjustment? So actually sure. maybe Craig can actually see yes. how we can adjust the probe temperature okay. uh, once again yeah, in that. Yeah, that's good. Um, so I'm going to get, uh, get to your next or final cut that we're going to look at. Yes. Um, but maybe in the meantime, we can answer another question from Lily. Um, the icon for convection bake and convection roast is the same. What's actually the difference between the two modes? Convection bake and convection roast. Well, the convection bake is actually using the fan at the back and the bottom element. And convection roast is actually using um, the fan, but it also uses like a little bit of top and bottom so that it's actually circulating um, the heat that's going through the oven. So, um, and sometimes with convection roast as well, it may only use the fan at the back because it's forcing that um, heat into the oven cavity itself just to, um, to push that through on there. So it depends. I mean, if you're making a cake where you're doing a convection bake, you may want to use that. If it's um, convection roast where you are doing the meat, you want that brownness to go either from top and bottom. Okay. So Marilyn, we have a, so we've done the chicken. Yes. Because uh, we get a lot of questions about poultry and where to put the probe. Right. Uh, we've done the uh, pork loin. Mm -hmm. um, so our, our final cup we're going to cover today with the roast probe is the uh, beef, beef roast? Yes. The beef roast. On here. Excellent. Yes. Um, so which oven are you going to use for the beef roast? So um, with this, I wanted to showcase it into our M-Touch oven. So this is the one that uses our wireless probe. So I'm just going to reach in. 
um, because I, this probe is calibrated to this oven. So that's why, I, even though I have one on the counter, I need to make sure I'm using this, otherwise this is not going to work. So this, so this is now very unique. So we've moved from a wired probe, which we saw in the Combi Steam Oven, yes. our um, Sensatronic Oven, 30-inch oven, now to a wireless roast mm -hmm. probe. So that's obviously very unique. Um, provides a lot of flexibility yes. for our customers now because there is no wire mm -hmm. involved. Yes. Um, but we also call this a four-point roast probe. Mm -hmm. um, maybe talk a little bit about that. Sure. On our Dash 2 uh, oven, so... Um, so Dash, Dash 2 is yes. an internal term. It really is our next, our current generation or the latest generation of ovens that we have. Right. And, I, and we need to point that because some people that may have... Um, an the older first, generation. Yeah, an older yeah, the, generation. The first generation oven that has the wireless. Yes. Um, you will not actually have a four-point roast probe. You would only have the single-point roast probe, which is the same technology as our wired roast probe. Yes. Um, what's important to note, unfortunately, is you cannot upgrade those ovens to utilize the four-point roast probe. Yes, exactly. Unfortunately. And each of these probes, as I mentioned, why I reached over to this is that um, this has been calibrated exactly to the oven that you would have at home. So either probe that you have, um, you couldn't use a probe that maybe you have in your kitchen drawer that you see that you have a wireless probe and maybe, oh, I can use this or in the oven because it will not work. It has to, the signals um, has to flow through so that whatever the, um, the core temperature that you're selecting that you would like has to signal that and that's how we'll know that, okay, this is working for this oven. Right, and, and I think more so is that even if you, for whatever reason, needed to replace the Miele probe and you got a new Miele probe, yes. because it needs to be calibrated, it actually doesn't work um, automatically that way. Um, we actually have to calibrate it yes. for you. So uh, Marilyn had another probe to show you at the beginning from another oven, uh, but she actually can't use that probe in this specific oven. So there is actually a direct link between the probe and the specific oven that's being used. Um, so Anna, quickly, I, I yes. see we have a question from Anna. Uh, thank you for watching the session we did on, on Mueller ranges. Um, yes, so hopefully the, what we talked about earlier answered your question in regards to the four-point rose probe. Yes. So again, it only comes in the newer versions. Uh, of our ovens, including the ranges as well. And unfortunately, it is not upgradable. Uh, so if you have an oven that came with a single point roast probe, wireless, you cannot automatically upgrade that. Uh, actually cannot be upgraded to the four point roast probe, unfortunately. Right. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. So um, before I season the meat as well, I'm just gonna put salt and pepper and some oil on here. Um, what I do want to mention about the four-point probe is that you notice that with our other cuts of meat that we had, that we inserted it at the top because that's where it has to register. The frequency in this uh, has to be picked up when you're inserting it from the top. But with the four-point, you can actually insert it on the side if you want it. Um, on each side, you can be off-center. And what ends up happening is because there's four uh, sections in the probe itself is that if you were to only have three of the sensors in here, um, and then if we're cooking the beef at 135 degrees Fahrenheit, is that it is going to calculate the, um, the number between one, two, and three to get it to 135. So it'll bring it to that even doneness on there. Yeah, so right? at the end of the day, using a four point roast probe now instead of a single point, really what it means for, for you using it is, it provides a lot more flexibility um, in the sense of you don't, you don't have to worry so much about being so accurate where you're inserting the probe because it's actually using the four different points within the probe um, to come up with the right calculation for the internal temperature versus a single point. If, for example, you're touching the bone on the single point, then the problem is 100% you're going to be, in, it's going to give you an inaccurate reading. Now with the four point rose probe, your, your accuracy is based on the average of the four points. So it, again, it gives you your margin of error. Uh, it gives you a lot more flexibility from that perspective. 
What's also interesting to note about the four-point roast probe is this is actually right now only available in North America. So only in Canada and the U.S. in Mila ovens can you get the four-point roast probe. Um, I know the other day we actually had a viewer that joined us from Australia. Um, unfortunately for him, he would not actually be able to right now get the four-point roast probe. It's uniquely launched in Canada in the U.S. Right. So Marilyn, you're just seasoning with some olive oil um, yes. and some salt right now. Yes. And I think we'll add some pepper. Yes. So I actually may need you to assist me with this, Kelly, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, so, sorry. No, no problem. Just to ensure social yeah. distancing, I will ask and you to step back. And then I will back. turn. Okay. We're just going to do the sides. And I'm going to aggressively do this because yeah. it creates a really nice crust, okay. I find. Perfect. Oops. Thank you. No problem. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I can remove my gloves right now. Marilyn, while you do that, I'm going to wash my hands as well. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. So as we mentioned about uh, where this is going to be inserted into, so because I don't have to worry about where it's going into the oven, because I'm not plug it, plugging the uh, wired probe in, on the side, and I'm just going to insert it right into, I'm thinking about here. So even though I have a little bit of the probe sticking out, as you can see here, that's fine because um, the majority of it is in there and it's going to pick up on the frequency itself for when um, we put this in the oven. So let's start this. Um, I'm going into the gourmet center. I'm again going into the master chef meat. It's beef and it's a roast beef. And Kelly, do you want a selection of how you like this done? Medium rare, please. Medium rare. So as I mentioned to you now, so 135 is the temperature, but Craig had a question about yeah. changing this. So um, at this stage, Craig, I can actually go a little bit lower if I wanted to, um, or I can go higher and then I would press OK. Uh, but because Kelly has actually selected a medium rare, I'm going to leave it at 135 degrees. But that's to show you that you can change the temperature and then set it and then it'll be ready for you. So I'm gonna open the oven, we will just say okay. And it says place the food in the oven and use the roast probe. So I'm gonna place the food into the oven. Pressing okay. And now it's saying to you shelf level three. So once again, I've counted one, two, and three. So my meat is already set to go in here. I'm gonna press okay. And it's telling me that this will be finished in approximately six, uh, at 647. Okay, so I'm just going to close. Now, sometimes what may happen, because this is actually, now the temperature is at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, core temperature is at 135. At some point in the oven, this may recalibrate itself that, um, and the time may change. Right. So um, if you're thinking right now and you're planning dinner, okay, at 647 it's done. Just have a look at it when it's halfway through just to see whether it's recalibrated itself to because it could be cooking a little bit faster in, on the inside because of the size of the meat that we have. Yep. So different sizes will affect uh, maybe how long it's going to take. Marilyn, uh, Cynthia actually has a uh, question for you. And Cynthia, thank you for continuing to, to join us in these sessions. Um, she's just asking what kind of beef actually are we using for this demonstration? in this particular case. This one I picked up a round, um, outside round uh, beef that I've put in there. Yeah. Good. But I could use any, really, any cut of meat that I wanted to, depending on what, um, you know, we're going to the stores now and seeing what's available. So I didn't want a really big piece of meat. So this, with the outside round, I found was a nice piece to show the variance between the sizes that I was demonstrating. Yeah, so it's also, in, in reality, very challenging for us as well in, 
and going out right now also looking for yes. uh, for the right groceries to use so but hopefully we've answered uh, Cynthia your question there um, we had another question uh, Marilyn for you from Donna um, when your roast is done do you remove the probe from its socket and then take out the roast or take the probe out of the roast first I actually take um the wire probe from the socket itself, I pull that out and then I take the meat out and then I remove it. It's a little bit safer because you don't want that hanging on the inside. So if you just unclip it, if you have um, oven mitts, just go in and unpull it. And then once the meat comes out, you can then remove the, the probe from there. But I don't think it actually matters. It doesn't uh, really matter which... either way, no. I've just, I think it's what you're used to at times. Um, I just found it easier to unplug it and then to remove the meat. Um, so we have a, a, qu a question from uh, Craig. Um, would you recommend a wired or wireless probe? So Craig, I'm oh. assuming you're asking about a Miele wireless or uh, wired probe. It's actually... Um, I think the way I would answer that is it really depends in the selection of my oven right. that I am um, thinking of purchasing because uh, if I am going with an M-Touch oven, that just automatically comes with the wireless probe. Yeah. If I'm, I don't need maybe some of the features that is in there and I go with a Sensitronic model, then that will automatically come with a wired probe. Um, so it's really not... a big difference on there it's just what oven it is that I am actually selecting so don't have the preference I do like the four point uh, with the wireless so and, and I think that's one of the benefits but you know I think in both cases um, Craig one thing with the technology we are offering with the ovens is that um, it really works as a system so it's not just a probe on its own that measures internal temperature right. it works with automated programs and you're getting that benefit whether it's a wired or wireless, you're still getting that benefit. I think the one big benefit of the wireless um, is really what Marilyn talked about, is the four-point roast probe is only available in the wireless, uh, with the wireless probe. And that four-point, again, gives you that flexibility of margin of error, mm -hmm. um, again. And it also gives you flexibility to do things that are typically flatter. Right. Um, than, uh, you know, typically chickens or roasts. Mm -hmm. When it actually comes to baking other things, yes. uh, you can actually use the wireless roast probe for yeah. it. Well, the I four could point probe. use it in a hamburger, actually, if I wanted to, because it's a patty and I just want to make sure that... Because you can go doneness, through the side. I can go through the side, um, and that would work really well. So, mm -hmm. great question, though. Great. Um, and, Meryl, I'm going to continue with the questions because yes. there seems to be a lot of questions yes. uh, coming in. There's a question about chicken uh, yes. earlier, and I believe that was from uh, Chris. Uh, so Chris uh, has a, a menu question, not necessarily roast uh, probe related, but we'll ask the question uh -huh. anyways, Chris. Uh, when you're cooking the roast chicken and wanting to cook the potatoes at the same time, any tips for making the perfect potatoes or root vegetables? Hmm, any tip? You, um, so it's cooking it together, she's thinking, or Well, separately? you know, I think we talked about because the chicken's on, on the rack and yeah. you can actually cook other things yeah. with it, um, what options are there for... Oh, my gosh. I mean, you can, on the bottom tray, you can put um, sweet potatoes if you'd like. You can put uh, parsnips or turnips in there. Like, Chris, you know, I'll tell you a personal trick yeah. uh, for the perfect roast potato for me. So... Uh, Instead of putting the potatoes in raw uh, underneath to roast, uh, we'll parboil par the potatoes. Yeah. Um, it also creates some kind of creases inside the potatoes. And when you roast it with the natural juices from the chicken, it really creates crispy nuggets inside. So that, that's my own personal yeah. tip for doing that. But it's also easy enough to just uh, throw the vegetables in mm -hmm. um, and just let the natural juices cook yes. um, in that so exactly uh, yeah that would be my my personal tip yeah. on cooking potatoes yeah and I've done it that way as well the same way that you've done Kelly and it's nice sometimes I'll just actually uh, grate it with a fork just yep. to create more um, texture yeah some nooks and crannies yeah, in between exactly. and then it, it roasts and then really to put nicely it in there. Mm -hmm. um, 
so we have another question from Anna. Um, Anna Salmon out there. Um, I understand that when I use the probe, you can't have foil on the meat. Example, turkey. Is that right? Um, yeah, I don't put foil on my turkey at all because, I mean, a lot of times people put foil on to the ends of the legs because they think it's going to burn or it's going to brown more. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I'm not sure if you're different with, than that, me, Kelly, but I've gone into the gourmet um, program and I've just selected gourmet turkey and I just put um, the probe that's in there and I, I just let it cook and roast. So yep. um, does it affect it if it uh, has the foil in it? It's not going to give it that the brownness, I think. Um, I think more of the question, Marilyn, is does it actually impact the frequency from the probe itself? That's a good question. Yeah, and, 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 and I don't want to stir you wrong on this. So um, it would be one that I will check, and then maybe we'll get back to you um, if, as to whether it does or not. So that's a great question, though. Yeah, that's a really good question, Anna. We'll, we'll get back to you on that. Yeah. I believe for sure on the wired rose probe, there's no impact. Uh, but the foil on the wireless rose probe, we'll, we'll definitely have to look yes. into and get you the proper answer for that. Yeah. But, but you're right, Marilyn, when I, when I do turkey, um, I use the uh, auto roast function or the MasterChef yes. function, and uh, I've never had to yeah. put foil on, exactly. on it. But, but that's a very valid question for, for other things, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll try to get back to you in, yes. uh, on that one. Um, Lily has another question um, in regards to programs. How to decide between using auto roast for beef roast versus the MasterChef roast for beef? So really, in a way, simply put, is that um, if you are somebody that wants to cook a nice piece of meat or whatever that you're going to be roasting, and you want to take the guesswork out of it because you know you're making a nice meal for somebody for your family, and it's maybe um, the first time that you're making um, a beef roast or a pork tenderloin or anything like that, and you want to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly. I would think probably take the guesswork out of it all and use the MasterChef program. But if you are a very seasoned um, cook and you can, you know, by smell, a lot of times with me, I, I, it's by smell. I'll know that something is ready because I'll be able to smell it. And I know at home, it's um, with my boys, that I'm always telling them, I'll know when it's ready. I'll just know if I'm not using a probe, I know when it's ready. And they're like, how does she do this? But really, it's by sense of smell. So. Really, a more seasoned uh, chef may not need to go using the roast probe feature, so they'll go on to the auto roast. And, and maybe, Marilyn, explain a little bit really what the auto roast function does. Um, well, basically, it does a series, like when you select um, auto roast in here, you're just basically, um, you've put your cut of meat that's on the tray itself. It's searing it as well. It's going to sear it. And then um, it's going to, you're selecting the length of time that you would like that meat to cook. And then after that, um, it's remembering that um, to take it out by that time when it beeps to remove it. Right. Um, but it's, it's just removing sometimes. Somebody knows um, the look of it, the way they want it done, and they just uh, judge that. Oh, in an hour and a half, my beef is going to be ready, and I don't have to. Um, I don't need to use a probe on there. But it's a nice searing that right. actually happens on there and, too. And I think really it's the searing. The so, searing, yeah. So, so the benefit of the auto roast is that the program really brings the temperature up as though you were searing a piece of meat on the cooktop. Except now you don't have to do that. It, really, the oven does that for you, and then it brings the temperature back down once the roasting yes. searing process has yes, been done. Yes, exactly to them roast. So I think that's really the difference between the MasterChef, the MasterChef. program, which mm -hmm. it does the auto roast, yes. but then it's actually measuring the internal core temperature yes. versus the auto roast is really just the cooking function of searing. Searing and then, and then yeah, lowering so, it to lowering the temperature it. that you've selected yeah, on there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, JSTAR11 has uh, a, a great question. Um, was there any specific reasons as to why you chose the ovens for these specific cuts of meat? I have both uh, ovens and often don't know which one I should use? That's an excellent question, Ashley. And yes, there was reasons for that. So um, I put the chicken into the 30-inch oven. So whether I had placed it into the Sensitronic or the um, uh, Easy Control, let's just say, or the 
MasterChef, but if I'm using a probe, it would have been the Sensotronic or the M-Touch. And the reason for that is because it has a self-cleaning function that's in there. So once the oils are splattered and it's dirty in there, I know that I can simply put um, the self-cleaning mode on and then it's going to clean it. Now, I chose the smaller oven for the, um, the pork only because I wanted the size in there and I just wanted the different heights. But now I know for myself is that when this is finished cooking, I don't have a self-cleaning uh, feature that's in there. So once it's cooled, I am going to have to wipe it out. So it wasn't, um, you know, I mean, I could have put the chicken up here as well and then I would have had more cleaning to do. So I'm thinking the least amount, it wasn't really fatty with the pork, uh, so I put it into the DGC. I may have less cleaning to do on there and then the other two I'll use as self-cleaning. But that's about it. And it smells great in here. And yes. Unfortunately, you cannot smell this, but if you like the smell of roasting meats, we yes. have the roast chicken that smells great. Yeah. Um, the roast pork and, and the beef is still, uh, it's at a searing phase, so you can yeah. kind of get that amazing smell. So. And, you know, it's, I'm not sure if, uh, Gary, you can actually see uh, close to that, but where we didn't oil the chicken at all. And maybe you open it. Uh, maybe I'll just open it quickly, and then you can actually see how... It's already starting to get brown and it's getting crispy and it's crackling inside of here. Right? Yes. So I'm going to close it because it's telling me close this because I'm still cooking. So, so uh, many more questions. Unfortunately, our time has uh, run uh, thin on this. Yeah. Um, Marilyn, anything you want to wrap up in regards to just tips and tricks and other points about the roast probe yes. before um, we sign off? Yeah, before I sign off, one thing I would like to mention on here is that with a roast probe, a lot of times people may think that it's okay to put it into the dishwasher, you know, to clean right. it. But uh, with a wireless probe, um, you can actually place this in the dishwasher and it won't affect it at all. With the wired probe, you should not put that into a dishwasher or it, it, submerge it in water. Just take uh, a damp cloth and wipe the actual wand of it right here to clean it, wipe down anything, but don't um, immerse it in any water because it yeah. could damage it uh, down the road. So that, that's funny. I thought it would have been completely the opposite, yeah. but actually, so again, with the wired wireless rose probe, it can, it is actually dishwasher safe. Yes. Uh, with the wired rose probe, it actually is not. Um, actually, Marilyn, one last question coming in um, yes. that I think it's important is a very good question from Martha. And uh, I just want to, uh, ask you that question. Um, can I use the roast probe in all cooking methods? So can I broil uh, using, use the broil function using the roast probe or the wireless roast probe? Uh, no, I will not recommend it in the broil because this will actually melt because the temperature is so high in the broil. And um, so if you do use this, you may actually see that this is melting on the inside of the oven once you remove it from the meat. So that is not a recommendation to use it for there, so yeah. no. But again, I think if you follow our MasterChef yeah. programs and it'll prompt you for the probe if you want to use the probe, that will be the best uh, guideline for that. Exactly. So thanks, Marilyn. Uh, You're welcome. You know, again, for any of you that have questions that we haven't been able to get to, uh, we will for sure uh, answer them in the comment section. I know there's one follow-up question in regards to the foil that yes, we will we'll definitely uh, get, back. get back to you on, on that question. Um, so Marilyn, I want to thank you for the session tonight. You're um, I just hope this has helped everybody as well, which is because the questions that we always get yeah. right, coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, again, uh, as you remain safe in your home, uh, many of you have had questions about what services we are currently offering here at Milo. So just as a reminder, um, if you are interested or want to purchase any appliances or even our care collection products, uh, our maintenance products, those are available on Mila.ca at our shop. It's open obviously 24-7. If you are buying an appliance from us, there's a couple ways to do this. One, you could do it on Mila.ca again, but we've also introduced our personal telephone consultation service. That's, you can book an appointment on Mila.ca. One of our product experts will be in touch with you and they can actually answer any questions you have or they can actually take your order over the telephone. When it comes to actually delivering the product to you and or installing the product, 
Mila's own delivery and installation teams are actually servicing customers nationwide. We do nonetheless have some revised processes and guidelines based on the current conditions that we're all living through right now. Um, and that's really based on ensuring the safety of you, our customers, as well as our own internal staff. Just be sure to visit Mila.ca to see what those new guidelines and procedures are. But again, we are servicing our customers nationwide. For any of you that do require more technical service, our, our customer service center is open. Our own Mila customer service center is open to service you. They are we're work, working remotely, but again, um, fully accessible to you. Our technical service teams, our Mila certified technicians are available as well for any of you that require service, again, visit Mila.ca for the guidelines um, that they're operating under. Um, right now, for those of you that have joined us, we do have a very special promotion for you. Right now on Mila.ca, we have a 30% off promotion on the Mila Spring Clean Kit. Um, but for those of you that are watching us today, upon checkout, if you enter the code Mila Live Roast, you actually get an additional 10% uh, discount on any purchase, and you get a 10% discount on any of the uh, care products that we're offering for uh, your ovens and uh, cooktops. So be sure to visit Mila.ca. Very lastly, as many of you are at home, wanting to continue, as we should, to celebrate anniversaries, birthdays, um, we offer the Mila e-gift card that's available on Mila.ca. The perfect gift to send to your friends, family, uh, as a gift, and they can use that to purchase anything on Mila.ca. We want to thank you again for joining us. Um, be sure to tune in to uh, all the Mila Live sessions. So turn on your subscribe on your YouTube account to get the latest notifications. Turn on your notification to ensure that you're getting notified when we are live and new videos that get posted. Check on MilaLive.ca. Uh, Marilyn will be back with actually some really fun and exciting uh, cooking demonstrations in the coming uh, later this week and also uh, into next week as well, but be sure to look at MilaLive.ca. On behalf of Marilyn, uh, our Mila family, we want to send a very uh, Big thank you to all the frontline workers that are out there right now providing services to our communities, whether it's medical services, whether it's making sure our grocery stores are stocked, open, those that are doing food delivery services, uh, those that are ensuring our public transportation systems continue to operate. Uh, we really want to send uh, a genuine thank you to you, uh, your bravery, the services that you're providing us. Uh, we want to wish all of you uh, a very safe evening with your families, and hopefully you'll join us again on Friday for Mila Live. So be safe, enjoy your time together, and thank you very much, and have a great evening.